everyone, my name is Amberlynn and in this video I'll be showing you how I make one of our family's most delicious and effective medicines for killing the flu and the common cold. It's called Elderberry Tonic, taken from Rachel Weaver's book, Backyard Pharmacy, page 130, I think, yep. We've been using Elderberry Tonic for the last couple years and it's amazing how many flus and colds it has helped save us from. That in conjunction with garlic and you got an immune system boosting whammo cold killer. So I've taken Rachel Weaver's recipe and kind of modified it and that is what I'm gonna show you today. I'll go through the ingredients. First of all, of course, you need elderberries. We get these out of Nelson BC, um, Organic Matters and we'll be using a pound. Also our honey, of course, our own honey from our own beehives. And today we'll be using some of our own catnip and some of our wild yarrow that we have harvested. Apple cider vinegar, this is raw apple cider vinegar, also from Organic Matters. And a couple tinctures that I've made. This is propolis tincture that I've made from our uh, bee propolis. And then also spruce tip tincture. Both of these are incredible for boosting the immune system. They're very antibacterial and uh, just have some incredible qualities. So we also add that into our final product. So to start with, we are going to take our elderberries. This is a pretty big recipe. It'll make, I think, three, maybe four quarts of elderberry tonic. So per cup of dried elderberries, you need two cups of water. So one pound, that's about eight cups of water. So we have our one pound of elderberries covered in eight cups of water. This is our good well water. Of course, you want to use good water. And we're going to take this and put it on our stove, bring it to a simmer, and simmer it for about 10 minutes. After that, we're going to turn off the heat, add some of our yarrow and our catnip, stir it in, and then cover it and let it sit for two days and that way it'll infuse and make an incredible tonic. And then we'll come back and we'll put all of our other ingredients into this beautiful mixture. As you can see, our elderberries are starting to come to a simmer. And we're about ready to turn the heat down a little bit and just let it simmer for 10 minutes. So if you're using fresh elderberries instead of dried elderberries, Rachel Weaver says to cover them with water, bring them to a boil, then turn off the heat. You should probably cover them then as well, and then let them sit for 24 hours. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes here, and you can see that the elderberries are making this very beautiful dark juice. So. We're going to turn off the heat and we're going to add our other herbs, the yarrow and the catnip. These are optional. Rachel Weaver says that you can um, add echinacea and also elderberry flowers. Although we don't have those, so we'll just add this. Although if you didn't have any of these herbs on hand, you could totally do without. So we're gonna stir that in really well we're going to cover this up. The heat is off and we're going to leave it covered for about two days. Rachel Weaver says you can do 12 to 24 hours. We take the longer route. All right, so it's two days later and we are ready to strain off our elderberry juice. And that's what it looks like. So we have a really fine mesh strainer here and we're going to push it through that and squeeze as much juice as we can out of these elderberries. You do not want to eat these elderberry seeds because they can give you a really bad stomach ache. I did it once, I didn't want to throw them out so I was trying to eat them. I ate too many and it took me a long time before I actually enjoyed elderberry syrup again. It smells amazing. It smells like medicine. Like the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down. We're gonna just Squish as much of the, the juice out and then we're going to transfer the juice back into the pot and slowly heat it up with an equal amount 
of honey. So per cup of juice, we put a cup of honey in. I'm just gonna quickly rinse this out. This is a very important time to be wearing an apron. You do not want to have purple splats all over your clothes. Okay. I can still squish stuff out of this, but I'll deal with that later. Hola. That did not make very much juice. I thought it would make more than that. Anyway. Pour that super concentrated liquid into your pot and then double it with the amount of honey. So, this is our own honey from our beehives. Just beautiful alfalfa honey. I'm kind of just eyeballing this. I think that's about good. I maybe could add a little bit more. Now we're going to take this and slowly heat it. You do not want to heat this up too high because you do not want to destroy any of the medicinal properties in the honey. So super, super low and stir it off and that will also help it to dissolve faster. Low to medium. If it's any higher than low, then basically stir it consistently, I'd say, until it's well dissolved. So a couple minutes later and it's basically all dissolved and it's barely warm. So I'm going to turn the heat off and just keep stirring. And in the meantime, I am working at squeezing out as much juice from these elderberries. So we squeezed a bit more juice out. Perfect. Here is our uh, tonic mixture. It's quite syrupy and it's intensely sweet. All of the honey is dissolved. And now we're gonna just add the rest of this. And now we'll move on to adding our next three ingredients. So the first is apple cider vinegar. This recipe calls for about a quarter cup. It helps with the flavor. It also helps to preserve it a bit longer. So about quarter cup and then some of our propolis tincture. Now this can be done to um, to feel, I guess. I'll do probably a few tablespoons, couple tablespoons. Our spruce pitch tincture. And I'll do the same with that. Couple, few tablespoons. This also helps in the preservation. We do not keep this in the fridge. It is suggested that you do but we keep it in our cold room where it stays uh, probably about plus seven pretty consistently. And for us, that has worked perfect. It lasts us for a good number of months. Now there we go. Look at this. Amazing. Gotta taste it. Incredible flavor. Do you know what? I'm gonna add a little more apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is also incredible for fighting colds, boosting your immune system. So that's about good. With the tinctures and then the yarrow as well, the flavor is very intense. And it's slightly bitter, but it still is really, really good. One of the reasons why I also like to add the spruce pitch particularly is because of the a little bit different flavor. I was hoping it would help my family not want to eat this so much, but I don't know if that actually worked because they still really, really like it. And I often have to remind them, are you actually sick? Stir this right up and make sure you put it into good uh, bottles, preferably dark bottles, but these are just uh, recycled hot sauce bottles we cleaned out. So almost two and a half quarts that this recipe yields. Put on the lids and make sure that you label them and you date them. Then keep them for long storage in your refrigerator or in your cold room if you have one. 
The dosage that Rachel Weaver suggests for the elderberry tonic is taking half a teaspoon every half hour right as soon as you feel a cold coming on. And then after the first day of doing that every half hour, then you back off and take about five to six doses throughout the day until you're feeling better. Also, if you haven't, check out Rachel Weaver's book, Backyard Pharmacy, as well as lots of other books that she has. We have really enjoyed them, especially if you're into uh, natural remedies, natural health. She has some really, really good information, especially on herbs. So thanks for watching this video. We hope you can make your own and experience the very positive results that we have. And also, what works really good, like I said at the beginning, take it with garlic, fresh garlic. Crush up a clove or chop it up, let it sit for a minute to let the allicin be released and that just increases the health benefits of the garlic. And then take that, we like to do it before bed so that you're not disturbing everyone's lives with the incredible smell and aroma of garlic. But it uh, works really good in conjunction with the elderberry tonic. Thanks for watching and remember, a spoonful of honey helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way. See you next time.